Right before I even start talking about anything related to House of the Dragon, you should know that this video will be ridden with spoilers. So unless you have read the books or simply cannot wait to find out what is the next drama awaiting House Targaryen's fate, you might want to pause right about now. With that being said, the Seeds of the Dragon mostly dealt with the aftermath of the Battle of Rook's Rest. After a dragon's head being paraded as a traitor through the common lanes of King's Landing and Rhaenyra, losing her major ally in the last episode, almost everyone, from the Red Keep to Dragonstone, has become restless. The cruel war is being plotted in full-blown rage, with the Green Faction losing a king and the Black Faction reeling from the loss of their most important dragon. While it may seem everything in Episode 5 was at a standstill after a war that burned down hundreds of men on both sides, this is really just the calmness before the storm. As Rhaenyra and Jaceres discuss necessity measures to strengthen their forces without Daemon on their side, Aemon's chaotic plans to lead the Greens to yet another war scares the living shit out of Alicent. With the new trailer of Episode 6 being released, House of the Dragon has teased some of the most important events that is to set the outcome for the Dance of the Dragons. Given that this episode did not see much blood being shed, I think we are up for some pretty banger scenes for the next one. Now, without wasting another moment, let's discuss what we think is about to happen in the upcoming episode. Before we go into our explanation, we have a very small request. If you like our content, please support us by subscribing to our channel. This is a small click for you, but for us it means a lot. Thank you. Let's begin. The dragon will only accept a dragon lord to ride it. Also say the history. We are finally going to see the Red Sewing. Episode 5 of Season 2 ended with Queen Rhaenyra and Prince Jaceres discussing how they needed to get more dragon riders to claim the riderless dragons in Dragonstone, instead of sitting around and waiting for Daemon to rally more armies to their cause. Jaceres is honestly the most strategic man at the moment. Even if he is young, he knows very well that Wagar cannot be defeated by young dragons, even if they are faster than her. So he proposes that they should go through their family archives and documents to track down any trace of Targaryen or Valyrian blood in the past lineages. Even though Rhaenyra suggests that their blood might be too thin for being a dragon rider, it is definitely a risk she is willing to take. With Aemon ruling the Iron Throne, she would only be a fool to just sit down and do nothing. But if she gets Vermithor and Silverwing to her side, the Greens might be overruled after all. I think the book readers have also been waiting for the sewing for quite a while now. For those who are unfamiliar with the term, in fire and blood, the sewing is known as the time when Queen Rhaenyra Era, found herself reeling from a catastrophic battle, with more dragons at hand than any dragon riders. So Prince Jaceres Valerion suggested that they should summon all the bastards of the Targaryen and Valerion house in order to claim any riderless dragon to support Queen Rhaenyra's blacks and fight for her in the war. In exchange, they were promised lands and titles. Now, only a rare few succeeded in this daring task, and House of the Dragon has done a wonderful job to build up their arc. I think we will see many people trying to claim a dragon in the upcoming episode. The preview pretty much begins with Rhaenyra mentioning how the Black Faction is trying to do something that has never been attempted before in Westeros, which is why the ones who even think they can claim a dragon should also be prepared to meet their end. Luckily, we the book readers know that the gods did indeed favor Queen Rhaenyra in this quest after she invites every capable person of the realm to claim a dragon for her cause. Even though many will become dragon fodder while trying to mount a dragon, there will be a few of them who will succeed. I think some of you have already realized who they would be. In the next few episodes, we will see Hugh Hammer, Ulf the White, and Adam of Hull mount a few notable dragons for Rhaenyra and strengthen the Black Faction's forces claim to the Iron Throne. Without giving much away, Let's just say this would go on to make and break Rhaenyra's fate in the overarching narrative of the show. You have the arrogance of youth. Have the indignities of your childhood not yet sufficiently been avenged. The one-eyed Prince Regent is out for fire and blood. With whatever little we have been shown of Prince Aemon's ruling style in the new episode, it is pretty evident that nothing matters to him other than revenge and power. He is prepared to rule the Seven Kingdoms with an iron fist and his orders for the gates of King's Landings to be shut down to seal the small folk within the city is reason enough to understand that he simply does not care for those who do not serve his purpose. I think 
think everyone in the Green Small Council knows that Amond is the reason why Aegon is so horribly burnt and bedridden, but they also know better than to go against him, which is why each of the council members, including Lord Larrys and Kristen Cole, who always have been Alicent's most solid allies, don't hesitate to side with the decision of appointing Amond as the regent to rule on the king's behalf. Now, Aemon is out for blood. In the preview, we see Alicent struggling to get through to her son, wondering what amount of destruction would it take for him to avenge the indigenities he was put through as a child. Just before this scene, we see a glimpse of Aemon pressing down on King Aegon's wounds while he writhes in pain, which is really all the hint we need to understand that Aemon has been plotting to seize his brother's power for quite some time now. We also see the Lannister army being rallied to march for the Green faction. As he mentions in the preview, Jason Lannister is about to march his army across Westeros, and we already know that from the season's first episode, when Egon's master of coin, Tylan Lannister, had mentioned that his brother was assembling an army in the West. For those unfamiliar, Jason Lannister is the Lord of Casterly Rock, the Warden of the West, and the head of House Lannister. But then, Kristen Cole is worried that if Daemon manages to secure the Riverlands for Rhaenyra, the Lannisters would no longer have the numbers to challenge him. But we have been aware for quite some time now that Eamond has been waiting to have a showdown with Damon for a while now. As he has mentioned to Kristen Cole before, his uncle is a challenge he has been looking forward to. Now, in Fire and Blood, Eamond saw his uncle Damon and the large army he had gathered at Harrenhal as a major threat. So, he summoned his bannermen and declared his plan to take the fight to Damon and the rebellious Riverlords. Eamond aims to strike the Riverlands from both the east and west, forcing the Lords of the Trident to fight on two fronts. Meanwhile, Jason Lannister has put together a strong force in the Western Hills, including a thousand armored knights and seven times as many archers and men at arms than the Blacks. He plans for them to descend from the high ground and cross the Red Fork with fire and sword, while Sir Criston Cole marches forth from King's Landing, while being joined by Eamond himself on Wagar. From what I can say, their combined armies intend to attack Harrenhal and crush the traitors of the Trident. Plus, if Daemon comes out to fight, Eamond is confident that Wagar Wagar will defeat Caraxes and that he will return back to the city with Damon's head. At least that is how Eamond envisions the battle would play out for him. However, Alicent apparently wants him to wait until Aegon and his dragon Sunfire the Golden are healed properly so they can join the attack as well. But Eamond has no interest in waiting because as Alicent has mentioned in the preview that he is high on the arrogance of youth. Eamond doesn't need his brother or his dragon as he has always wanted to take down Damon himself. If the show decides to go by the books, we already know that Damon leaves Harrenhal before Eamon arrives with his forces. Even then, this is a good tease for the battle above God's eye between the uncle and the nephew, which is building up to be one of the most monumental battles in the House of the Dragon. What you cannot do, let others do for you. Myceria's plan will finally play out in the upcoming episode. So, in Episode 5, we see how Myceria tells Queen Rhaenyra that she must allow her to carry out the work that the queen herself cannot do. Not all battles are fought on the field with armies and dragons, some are fought through scheming and politicking. Episode 5 pretty much begins with Kristen Cole parading the head of Maylies through the city. But it is not a victory the small folk want to celebrate, and nobody understood this better than Otto Hightower. Until now, dragons were considered to be equivalent to gods, and the unnatural death of a dragon is nothing more than an omen for them. We already know that with the war brewing, the small folk were already on edge, and after Aemond had the gates of the city shut down, most of these people would be starving from the lack of food or money. This would inevitably lead to a riot within King's Landing, and unless Eamond is planning to burn down a few thousand hungry rioteers, I don't see how he plans to stop them. Myceria knows the common folk very well. She knows how to instigate them to a point that they start acting in Rhaenyra's favor, and that is exactly why she asks the Queen to send Elinda Massey, her lady-in-waiting, to add fuel to the slow brewing fire in King's Landing. We also see Alinda meeting up with Diana, and if you remember, Diana was the servant girl from the first season that King Aegon had sexually assaulted. I think Diana will play a huge role in the upcoming episode and will help Alinda mess with the few existing food carts lying around the city. This will only pace up the instability within the small folk and lead them to start a riot against the crown. Hunger drives people to do crazy things. We have seen how the small folk of Flea Bottom reacted when they were dying of hunger under King Joffrey Baratheon's rule in Game of Thrones. They came down to attack the king himself and almost raped Sansa Stark, who at the time was betrothed to him. There is a scene in the preview where Alicent is trying to safeguard Helena 
while the king's guards try to contain a bunch of unruly people. This is probably the beginning of the riot by the small folk, which would later go on to play a huge role in the fall of the dragons. Diana would probably make sure they attack Alicent and Helena, given that when the queen had found out about her assault, she had given Diana a cup of moon tea and a few pennies to keep her mouth shut before firing her from the Red Keep. Basically, Diana would probably go to any lengths to oversee the downfall of Aegon and his family, no matter how small of a role it might be. I do not know my part, Miss Arya. Will Rhaenyra stand alone? In Episode 5, we have seen that Rhaenyra has sent Sir Alfred Broom to Harrenhal to figure out what exactly is Damon up to, given that nobody has heard from ever since he has left Dragonstone. Now, we already know that Rhaenyra is struggling to reason with the Black Small Council as the lords keep underestimating her for being a woman. Plus, they have opposed almost all her decisions at every turn, so it is possible that when she puts forth the idea of sewing in front of the council, they think her to be insane. I also think Rhaenyra will start dismissing her small council members one by one to keep them busy in other trivial matters Matters, while she plays out her own strategies for the war. We also see Corley's Valerian sitting beside Rhaenyra at the council table, which means he has most probably accepted her offer to become the Queen's Hand. In the preview, we see Corley's looking at someone while standing alone at the council table followed by Rhaenyra telling someone that it is probably her fault that they had forgotten to fear her. Now, it might seem that she is talking about Daemon, given that she also mentions how this person has failed to see her as the symbol of authority, but Rhaenyra is most definitely talking to one of the members of her small council. We see the council table empty for a reason, and I think the queen has started to take back her power by dismissing those who speak over her. Most importantly, I am 100% sure that Daemon will be coming back from Harrenhal in the next episode with the army he has gathered from the Riverlands, and like Jace has mentioned in the pre Preview, if the Blacks were to win, they definitely need Damon to stand beside them. How will the sewing turn out? As Rhaenyra is set to gain more dragons and dragon riders, we will see many people trying to claim themselves as dragon seeds, which is the term used for bastards fathered by men from Valyrian descent. We already know from the books that Hugh will claim Vermithor and Ulf will claim Silverwing, while many others will die trying to bond with dragons. But in episode 6, Adam of Hull will be the first dragon rider Rhaenyra gets, with Sea Smoke as the first dragon to be claimed by an outsider, even before the sewing begins. As you know, Sea Smoke was once the dragon of Laenor Valerian. Now that Laenor has faked his death and left Westeros, it seems Sea Smoke wants another rider. The dragon has been spotted restlessly flying around Dragonstone, almost as if it is sad and lost without its rider. As the preview hints, we will see Adam mount Sea Smoke and swear fealty to Rhaenyra. Throughout Season 2, Adam's journey will surely be remarkable as he will transform from a shipwright to a dragon rider and from a bastard son of Corley's Valerian to a legitimized heir of House Valerian, all thanks to Rhaenyra. According to the preview, Adam will meet Rhaenyra on the beach after claiming sea smoke. At first, she will be shocked at first, but would go on to accept him and his dragon once she learns who he is and what his true intentions are, especially after he bends the knee to her. Adam claiming sea smoke was hinted at back in episode 2 when he was foraging for crabs and clams on the beaches of Driftmark and Sea Smoke was following him around. In other words, I think it was Sea Smoke who chose him, not the other way around. But what I don't understand is how Adam can ride Sea Smoke if Lenor is actually still alive because as long as Lenor is alive, Sea Smoke shouldn't be able to bond with another rider. This makes me wonder if Lenor has somehow died while he's over in Essos or if the great distance has affected their bond. Maybe Sea Smoke thinks he's dead because he can no longer sense or feel Lenor's presence in Westeros. It will really be interesting to see how the show addresses this issue. We will also witness many people getting burned and eaten by dragons as they try to claim them. Besides the dragon seeds, many of Rhaenyra's household knights, squires, scullions, sailors, men at arms, mummers, and even some of her maids will make an attempt to claim a dragon. In the books, 16 men died during the sowing and 48 were burned or maimed. Most of these deaths will be shown in quick and short scenes of people trying to claim dragons and failing miserably. I think Rhaenyra, commander of the Queen's Guard, Stefan Darklin, will also be gearing up for a brutal end, given that he is one of the men from the books who tried to mount a dragon and died. Darklin is already furious on the Greens for killing his father unjustly, so maybe this fire of vengeance led him to claim a dragon, and given that he has no Valyrian blood in him, it ultimately leads to his end. 
Urhena might replace a very important character from the books. If you have seen the preview, you might have noticed Reyna looking at the sky in shock for a brief second. Now, according to the preview outline, Reyna will find a wild dragon while she is in the veil. If you remember, Reyna was sent to the veil by Rhaenyra along with Dragon Eggs and her three sons earlier in the season. It is being said that she will learn about a wild dragon roaming the area, and if this leak is accurate, Reyna will mount a dragon named Sheepstealer. Sadly, this could become one of the most divisive moments of the season. If you have read Fire and Blood, you know that Sheepstealer was eventually ridden by a girl named Nettles. But if they have Reyna ride Sheepstealer, we might not see Nettles at all. I actually hope this does not happen because it would greatly affect the entire Nettles story arc from the book. Although this is the world of Game of Thrones, I highly doubt they want Reyna to stand in for the Nettles scenes with Damon next season. It would make for a very bizarre relationship since Reyna is Damon's daughter, and sexualizing that might just make things weirder than they already are. But, irrespective of that, in the earlier episodes, we have already seen Reyna's frustration during her conversation with Rhaenyra. She feels unwanted because she doesn't have a dragon of her own, so this could very well be setting up her bonding with a dragon later this season. With that being said, we also know of a few insider news where Eamond is apparently going to arrange a marriage pact for his mother, Alicent, with one of the major houses of Westeros, probably House Tully. While she will definitely refuse, it gives us a whiff of the lengths her son would go to secure his power over anyone who underestimates him. So, that was our breakdown for the trailer of the upcoming House of the Dragon episode. Do you guys think the Reyna theory has some weight to it? Let us know in the comment box below. And if you liked our content, don't forget to leave a like and subscribe to us if you haven't already. Have a good one and be safe. Thanks everyone.